and recently you've had some work reproduced over the last couple of years. You've had a lot mm -hmm. of work reproduced or stolen without your consent. Yeah, and by, by, by notable people. Like, you know, it's uh, people that shouldn't have been doing that, people that know better. And um, some of the artists that are doing it, I mean, they're great artists. Mm -hmm. that capable, very capable. Very capable of doing it. Um, how do you stop this? How do you deal with it? So Justin, yeah. Justin Hardin was talking in one of his presentations that oh, he does like piece. angled angled pictures now to try to make it harder to reproduce. But with Instagram, you're trying to promote your business, mm -hmm. but at the same time, though, yeah. it's a double-edged sword. So the double-edged sword, I'm very aware of, and I, I do accept it for both slicey dicey ends of it. I, I really, I really, I know, I know how it exists. I get the full spectrum of it. Um, I will never stop creating content that people will like to, to look at, you know, like my art's always going to be pushed. My entire life goal is to push my art till I'm done, till my heart stops ticking. Like that's, that's the, that's the, that's the, that's the push. Like I'm pushing my art in any way, facet, form that I can to express myself. Will never stop. So I'll always post stuff. And I do understand because my work is so stylized, people are going to gravitate towards it. They're going to get inspiration from it. That's cool. I am cool with even people reproducing the work that I make. Because if, it, like I was saying during my seminar, Jim Lee, um, J. Scott Campbell, mm -hmm. um, Steve McNeven, all these artists that, you know, Tony Moore, mm -hmm. Tony Moore especially, all these artists that put out their comic book art, every single person that gets those things tattooed on, on them of that actual art, they're not going to go out and sue them for intellectual property. It's impossible. It's just impossible to yeah. keep up with that. And I totally understand that. Um, every person that reproduces a lot of the work that I put out there, I don't care. Mm -hmm. I really don't care as long as they credit me. If they say, if the, the recent infraction that happened, had he post, this is heavily inspired by Dave Tavanaugh, shout out to him for making a lot of great art or whatever, and uh, this client wanted that, and I channeled my energy based on what Dave makes, and here it is. That would have been beautiful. That would have been perfect. I would never have made a peep. I probably would have followed him and said, hey, thanks for the shout. I'm not petty like that. You know what I mean? I'm not petty enough to make a situation uh, about that when that dude went out of his way to make sure everybody knew that that source material came from me And that's all I want. I don't want to be forgotten in that sense. You know what I mean? Um, especially when it's something that's a direct painting that I made by an artist who's as well known as he is in his respective country You know, he has a very huge following where oh, he's yeah. from. Yep. and um, he's got a lot of friends here. Yep, and he's he travels the United States yeah, pretty he's often. here. Yep. So that's all that's all I wanted um, so I encourage people if they're gonna copy work um, if they're gonna take very large chunks of a piece to implement in their work and you feel in your heart that man I'm totally copying and it's weighing on you credit the artist I guarantee you you will eliminate 65% of the foreseeable problems that will come from that especially if you have an audience especially if you have an audience it's it's just the right thing to do just credit the person you're taking the work from if i were to do any traditional tattoo flash art mm -hmm. and tattoo on somebody jerry zeiss yep. jensen uh you know uh, paul rogers uh you know and any of the old any of the old guys that put out a ton of flash that a lot of people would tattoo again and again and again out of respect right now i'm going to credit them even if they're dead in the dirt i'm going to totally credit them because that's respect that's part of their legacy that I'm reflecting on, you know what I mean? And that's the least that I can do for honoring what they put out there in the world, what they slaved over at two or three in the morning while they were all by themselves, you know, trying to figure out what worked right for their designs. That's the least you can do if you're gonna do that. And a lot of guys do that, you know? Like it's um, it's the right thing to do. I just, uh, it, it's it's unavoidable. People are gonna copy stuff. Not a, It's never gonna stop. You can't beat up yeah. the most. Yeah, so if we can promote a kind of um, a sense of recognition for the source material in this culture. That's that's a good way to at least like ease the harshness, like the theft aspect of mm -hmm. your intellectual property. You know what I mean? What do you do? I mean, like some of the, there's shops. I've seen it several times. Mm -hmm. There's shops. There's conventions. Yeah. There's events that go on. Conventions have taken my posters. And they steal yeah. your what? Do you call them and you call them out, or yeah. do you um, just so if they're stateside? If they're stateside. Um, uh, a few studios have taken my work and made business cards, flyers, offered it up on their Facebook pages. 
I completely go over their heads on on the internet. I call the studios. Mm -hmm. If it's stateside here in America or in Canada, I will call. I will get on the phone, call, and talk with somebody. Um, most of the time, I'm met with hostility. I recorded a few of the conversations. I think I'm going to probably put them on YouTube. That would be hilarious. Yeah. Um, so uh, I call them. And I just let them know, like, look, I'm the original artist for the promotional material that you have coming out for X, Y, Z. And they know damn well that they didn't they do it. They knew exactly what was going on. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's not a... And they knew who they, they took can, it from. They can't feign ignorance. You yep. know what I mean? They can't do it. It's something they know they did off the rip. Um, so I call them. If it ends productively, they fix it. They take it down. They change it up. If it doesn't, I go the next step and it goes online. Because I feel like these people need to be called out for that. You can't get a pass if you're going to be flagrant with it. If it's going to be flagrant theft that you just you don't care about the ramifications because you don't think it's going to affect that little bubble or wherever it is that you exist, I don't think so. Um, I'm going to let people know, and I think that's what needs to happen. If people pull, st if I were to do that, I would expect that to be the consequence because that's just how I would expect to be treated in that situation. If I went and stole somebody's art and it goes online and I get busted out. If I get dragged through the dirt and I get comments, 500 comments on a photo that I use of, of said infraction, I deserved every bit of what I got out of that. The bad thing know. is, is like in the most recent event, you, you called the artist out mm -hmm. and we blocked the artist, mm -hmm. but we, I occasionally, from my personal account, I occasionally looked at his account mm -hmm. and it, people don't give a shit. I mean, I people were still talking about how great his work was. They told me, a lot of people were telling me that I was overreacting. A lot of people were telling me that I was uh, being too insensitive or too sensitive. Um, and I don't think that's the case. I work so hard. Like, I wish people under, like, and you, you understand. We know yeah. each other very well and you've seen a lot of my processes. Um, but I wish people understood that it's not something that comes easy to me. Uh, it's, it's something that I've worked for. I wasn't like innately really good at art my whole life. I had to work to be better at it the entire time. And I'm still working really hard to get better at it. And I'm lucky enough to have developed a style somewhere along the way that's palatable to a lot of people um, to where they'd want to wear it and they want to copy it and put it in their walls and put it in their houses and stuff like that and in their studios. Um, it's a lot of hard work. I have ruined so many good moments like you know I've, I've i've there's a lot of things that have been uh been i've put a lot on the line for this i've made a lot of people stressed out in my you made life. a lot of sacrifices in your made life. A, yeah like it's and that's putting it so lightly um that i'm very attached to that i'm very attached to that work and uh i'm not so crazy as to where i won't flip out if they credit me mm -hmm. like what this guy had done was he shouted out 42 sponsors mm -hmm. and then that all comes first before the fact that the actual source material that we're looking at came from me i remember what i was doing what mood i was in the nights that i made those pieces he took i know how i felt at those times that's what it was an era of my life they're part of you yeah you know like those two pieces one one of the pieces was a reward for kickstarter yeah and the other piece um was a was a painting that I made for myself when I was working at Top Shelf in Queens, and I had just started dating my girlfriend that I have now. Yeah. And I remember it being a very happy time, and I I can call back on those pieces and recollect when, I, what part of my life that was from, and it's personal to me. You know what I mean? Um, I don't care if they get tattooed. I don't care if they do whatever. Just credit me on that. This guy went through the process of announcing all these companies that don't care about their most of their. Sponsor, sponsorees or you know they're sponsored artists they don't care about him he's just it's just a, it's a big business handshake you know as far as they're concerned and um yeah he just avoids the obvious that it was a piece taken from me he apologized i'll be completely honest i think it was an apology based on him being caught and him having to make it you know what i mean so it felt a little disingenuine but that's the best that's the best i'm gonna get out of him so i'm gonna drop the issue with that with that dude yeah i mean he but, he i know he uh finally credited you and mm -hmm. kind of went through the pieces that he had done and he credited yeah. the people that he took and yeah. took art from inspiration and tracing yeah two different things yep. and a big grievance i had in our communication was the use of the word inspired versus the use of the word Straight up tracing. He <laughs> he tattooed a shoe. I'm not gonna say anybody's names, but he tattooed a shoe. A Jordan. A yeah. Jordan yeah. that was from a very popular mm -hmm. event, mm -hmm. and it was dead on. Yeah, yeah, line for line. line dead for on. Line. But yeah, the comments on that are accolades. Uh, yeah, accolades. we had to praise them. It doesn't it doesn't make any sense to me. It's so wild. But I don't know. I think people um 
the, the, the hive mind mm -hmm. of the internet a lot of times these days, especially with a lot of the younger crowd, it's a very goldfish memory mentality where like we forget what happened a week ago once they're on the other mm -hmm. side of the tank. Um, I don't forget. Um, less than that do I forgive, you know what I mean?